All right, Mosley. This is like a new character. I never met him before. I happened to look up and saw her outside the window looking in, not close to the glass, and not looking at anything in particular, just standing there with her head turned this way and her eyes full on me and kind of blank too. Like she was waiting for a sign. When I looked up again, she was moving toward the door. She kind of bumbled at the screen door a minute like they do and came in. She had on a stiff brim straw hat sitting on top of her head and she was carrying a package wrapped in newspaper. I thought that she had a quarter or a dollar at the most and that after she stood around a while, she would maybe buy a cheap comb or a bottle of N-word toilet water. So I never disturbed her for a minute or so except to notice that she was pretty in a kind of soul and awkward way and that she looked a sight better in her gingham dress and her own complexion than she would after she bought whatever she would finally decide on or tell that she wanted. I knew that she had already decided before she came in, but you have to let them take their time. So I went on with what I was doing, figuring to let Albert wait on her when she caught up at the fountain, when she came back to me. That woman, he said, you better see what she wants. What does she want? I said, I don't know. I, I can't get anything out of her. You better wait on her. So I went around the corner. I saw that she was barefooted, standing with her feet flat and easy on the floor like she was used to it. She was looking at me hard, holding the package. I saw she had as black a pair of eyes as ever I saw, and she was a stranger. I never remembered seeing her in Watson before. What can I do for you, I said. Still, she didn't say anything. She stared at me without winking. Then she looked back at the folks of the fountain. Then she looked past me toward the back of the store. Do you want to look at something? Do you want to look at, at some toilet things, I said, or is it medicine you want? That's it, she said. She looked, she looked quick back at the the fountain again so i thought maybe her ma or somebody had sent her in for some of this female dope and she was ashamed to ask for it i knew she couldn't have a complexion like hers and use it herself let alone not be much more than old enough to barely know what it was for it's a shame the way they poison themselves with it but a man's got to stock it or go out of the go out of business in this country <laughs> talking about makeup probably oh i said what do you use we have she looked at me again almost like she had said hush and looked toward the back of the store again I'd like for go back there, she said. I'd like for? Maybe I'd like to go back. All right, I said. You have to humor them. You save time by. I followed her to the back. She put her hand on the gate. She put her hand on the gate. There's nothing back there but the prescription case, I said. What do you want? She stopped and looked at me. It was like she had taken some kind of a lid off her face, her eyes. It was her eyes, kind of dumb and hopeful and sullenly willing to be disappointed all at the same time, but she was in trouble of some sort. I could see that. What's your trouble? I said, tell me what is it you want? I'm pretty busy. I wasn't meaning to hurry, but a man just has, hasn't got the time they have out there. It's the female trouble, she said. Oh, I said, is that all? I thought maybe she was younger. And she looked and her first one had scared me. And her first one had scared her. Or maybe one had been a little abnormal as a willing young woman. Where's your ma? I said, haven't you got one? She's out yonder in the wagon, she said. Why not talk to her about it before you take any med medicine? I said, any woman would have told you about it. She looked at me and I looked at her again and said, how old are you, 17? She said, oh, I said, I thought you maybe you were, she was watching me. But then in the eyes of all them, looked like they had no age and knew everything in the world. Anyhow, are you too regular or not regular enough? She quit looking at me, but she didn't move. Yes, yeah, she said, I reckon so. Well, which? I said, don't you know? It's a crime and a shame, but after all, they'll buy it from somebody. She stood there not looking at me. You want something to stop it? I said, is that it? No, she said, that's it. It's already stopped. Well, what? Her face was lowered a little still, like they do in all their dealings with a man, so he don't ever know just where the lightning will strike next. You're not married, are you? I said, no, oh, I said. And how long has it been since it stopped? About five months, maybe? It ain't been but two, she said. Well, I haven't got anything in, in store you want to buy, I said, unless it's a nipple. And I advise you to buy that and go back home and tell your pa if you have one and let him make somebody buy you a wedding license. Was that all you wanted? Or she just stood there not looking at me. I got the money to pay you, she said. Is it your own or did he act enough of a man to give you the money? He gave it to me, $10, he said that would be enough. A $1,000 wouldn't be enough in my store and 10 cents wouldn't be enough, I said. You take my advice and go home and tell your pa or your brothers if you have any or the first man you come to on the road. But she didn't move. Leif said I could get it at the drugstore, L-A-F-E. He said to tell you, me and him, will never tell nobody you sold it to us. And I just wish your precious Leif had come for it, come for it himself. That's what I wish, I don't know. I'd have a little respect for him then, and you can go back and tell him I said so if he ain't halfway to Texas by now, which I don't doubt. Me, a respectable druggist that's kept store and raised a family and been a church member for 56 years in this town. I'm a good mind to tell your folks myself if I can just find who they are. She looked at me now, her eyes and face kind of blank, 
Again, like when I first saw her through the window, I didn't know what she said. He told me I could get something at the drugstore. He said that they might not want to sell it to me, but if I had $10 and told him, I wouldn't never tell nobody. He, he never said this drugstore. I said, if he did or mentioned my name, I defy him to prove it. I defy him to repeat it or I'll prosecute him to the fullest extent of the law and you can tell him so. But maybe another drugstore would, she said. Then I don't want to know it. Me, that's, then I looked at her, but it's a hard life to have sometimes a man if there can ever be any excuse for sin, which it can't be. And then life wasn't made to be easy on folks. They wouldn't ever have any reason to be good and die. Look here, I said, you get that notion out of your head. The Lord gave you what you have, even if he did use the devil to do it. You let him take it away from you, if it's his will to do so. You go on back to Leif, and you and him take that $10 and get married with it. Leif said I could get something at the drugstore, she said. Then go and get it, I said, you won't get it here. She went out. Carrying the package, her feet making a little hissing on the floor. She bumbled again at the door and went out. I could see her through the glass going on down the street. It was Albert told me about the rest of it. He said the wagon was stopped in front of Grummer's hardware store with the ladies all scattering up and down the street with ha handkerchiefs to their noses and a crowd of hard-nosed men and boys standing around the wagon listening to the marshal arguing with the men. He was a kind of tall Gaunted man, G-A-U-N-T-E-D man, sitting on the wagon, saying it was a public street and he reckoned he had as much right there as anybody. And the marshal telling him he would have to move on. Folks couldn't stand it. It had been dead eight days, Albert said. They came from some place out in Yaknaupatafa country, trying to get to Jefferson with it. It must have been like a piece of rotten cheese coming into an anthill in that ramshackle wagon that Albert said folks were scared would fall to pieces before they could get it out of town with that homemade box and another fellow with a broken leg lying on a quilt on top of it and the father and the little boy sitting on the seat and the marshal trying to make them get out of town. It's a public street, the man says. I reckon we can stop to buy something same as every other man. We got the money to pay for it and hit ain't every law that says a man can't spend his money where he wants. They had stopped to buy some cement. The other son was and Grummet's trying to make Grummet break a sack and let him have 10 cents worth. And finally, Grummet broke the sack to get him out. They wanted the cement to fix the fellow's broken leg some way. Why, you'll kill him, the marshal said. You'll cause him to lose his leg. You'll take him on to a doctor. And you get this thing buried as soon as he can. Don't you know you're liable to jail for endangering the public health? We're doing the best we can, the father said. Then he told a long tale about how they had to wait for the wagon to come back and how the bridge was washed away and how they went eight miles to another bridge and it was gone too, so they came back and swam the ford and the mules got drowned and how they got another team and found that the road was washed out and they had to come clean around by Motson. And then the one with the cement came back and told him to shut up. We'll be gone in a minute, he told the marshal. We never aimed to bother any nobody, the father said. You take that fellow to a doctor, the marshal told the one with the cement. I reckon he's all right, he said. It ain't that we're hard-hearted, the marshal said, but I reckon you can tell yourself how it is. Show, the other said. We'll take out soon as Dewey Dell comes back. She went to deliver a package. So they stood there with the folks backed off with the handkerchiefs to their faces until a minute the girl came up with that newspaper package. Come on, the one with the cement said. We lost too much time. So they got on the wagon and went on. And when I went to supper, it still seemed like I could smell it. And the next day I met the marshal and I began to sniff and said, smell anything. I reckon they're in Jefferson by now, he said, or in jail. Well, thank the Lord, it's not our jail. That's a fact, he said. Why even give this guy a freaking chapter? Mosley? Uh, I feel like that was me going in right in front of the library or <laughs> anywhere I go people want to act like I'm a dangerous person people who have good lives they look at people that seem to not you know be as um, healthy minded as them and they look at you and judge you and, and if they see you parked you know for instance at the hiking trail there has been a couple even an old man there was, like he would just park there for like a week like with his pants half falling out of his ass, you know? And he'll have a bunch of shit, he'll take it out of his trunk, a bunch of shit. Seems like his family just dumped him there because he hadn't been there. All of a sudden there's a car that's not, uh, that's not, um, you know, that's not working all of a sudden. All of a sudden, um, it's just there. Like his family must have dropped him off there. Maybe he's an alcoholic, maybe he's losing his mind. But when I talked to that county worker, he told me, yeah, some people, some people right here that go hiking, they call for homeless people or if, the fucking, the little tunnel to get to the other side is too muddy. Like, these people pay taxes, so they really use that, you know? And, and I would too, but you want to do it in a way that's, in, in, a, in a good way, you know? Now, you try to help the homeless, man, except you call the police on them to try to get them out of there. 
which is so funny to me, man. People are retarded and ridiculous. Like, but it's only a matter of time before somebody calls on me some naive, ignorant as a human being that thinks, oh, I want to come here and I don't want to be have to be cautious to somebody that you're bothering to look at and, and pay mind to because they don't look as upkept as you. Like, it's crazy, right? So that was the end of uh, that was the end of Mosley.